presents a Big Ten matchup. The Penn State Nittany Lions and the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Big Ten Conference standing certainly have a different look this year from a year ago. The Hawkeyes 2-0, the Nittany Lions 1-2 with losses to Wisconsin and Ohio State. All right, the game is sold out at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, 70,397. These two teams also filled it back in 1993 when Penn State joined the Big Ten Conference. Brett Conway will kick off for the Nittany Lions in the white suits. Tim Dwight and Damon Gibson are deep for the black-shirted Hawkeyes. They play on real grass at Kinnick Stadium. That's the disadvantage. The kick is away, and it's a good high hanger. And it's taken at the five-yard line by Damon Gibson. He has a little help to the outside. He crosses the 30, fumbles the football at the 33-yard line, and Penn State has recovered it. I don't think Penn State needs a whole lot of help, but the Hawkeyes just gave him a big piece of it right there. Downer for the fumbling team. And a big lift for the uh, team that recovers it. Anthony Cleary is the man who recovered it for the Nittany Lions, and here comes the Lion offense onto the field at the 33-yard line of Iowa with Archie and Whitman lined up in the backfield. Whitman, of course, the big fullback. They pitch it back to the tailback, Mike Archie, looking for daylight, finds it, goes inside the 20 to the 18, picked up 15 yards and a first down. The quarterback for the Nittany Lions is a junior in eligibility, six foot four, 215 pound, Wally Richardson. You see his numbers, most impressive, 12 touchdowns and only two interceptions. His only losses were to Wisconsin and Ohio State. Bobby Ingram, number 10 on the field for Penn State today, has 37 receptions. He has also tied with Kenny Jackson for the school record. If he catches one today, he will have a school record career touchdown receptions. The record is 25. One more, and he's the man. But he is a very, very good football player, and they're taking him off the kick return duties for the day. And he's also in the record book quite a bit already. Yes, he is. There's Kenny. Yep. Of course, Kenny Jackson put his name in the record book as a wide receiver at Penn State. Had a chance to go to the professional leagues this year. Chose to stay at Happy Valley. Tied in on the short side down the bottom of the screen. Hand it back to Archie, and again, he has a huge hole in the... Defensive front, they just carved a hole for him. The guys who are doing the whole opening up there for him include Andre Johnson and Keith Conlon, the other tackle who has come back from a knee injury. Conlon is called the long tackle. He's 6'7", 304. That's not really why they call him the long tackle, but he certainly fits. Yeah, he always goes with the tight end. To the fullback, John Whitman, the seniors for the quarterback Richardson as Milne checks back in now. And on third down, pressure coming, passes away, passes incomplete and almost intercepted. It'll be 30 yards. And it is no good. Whoa, what a lift that is for the 70,000 people here, and most of them are rooting for the Hawkeyes. Seven straight victories. They had one tie in that uh, string of nine. So from the 20, Iowa's first play. Sherman back to throw the ball. Gets it off, and he has a man wide open. It is Rodney Filer out of the backfield, the fullback. And he crosses midfield. It's first down. It's crazy. Yeah. Sherman fakes it, keeps it, throws it, has his tight end available. The big guy, Slutsker, rumbling down the field, goes inside number 61. So they're short of people on the offensive front. And here's Sherman, the same motion, the fake. And down the middle in the end zone, incomplete. He hit him. Tim to five is Shaw, and he still hasn't seen it. And Atkins gets a hold of Sherman and takes him down at the 35-yard. Got to go to the 19 for the first. 
the straight drop of the pressure is coming and they try to set up a screen. They won't get it. The fullback, Rodney Pyle. Ryan Mill is in at fullback. Here's Wally Richardson back to throw it. He's hit just as he throws. The ball complete to Milne. And Milne will have a first down as he pounds into a power slot. Double wide, top of the screen. Here goes Mike Archie with the ball. Bouncing outside. It's in the play, and he can do it. Down the middle, throws the ball to Freddie Scott. Scott reels it in and makes it down pressure. Richardson looks and throws, and it's complete. And it's Bobby Ingram slanting in. Put the fullback mill in motion. Give it to Enos. There he the goes. Draft next spring. Second down, a long one. And pounding in the middle is John Whitman. Enos has got it again. Big hole. Pounding a lot fullbacks in there. Slow just checked in. He's moving around. Milne and Whitman hands the ball over. He the ball. It goes into the end zone. They dive on it. Looks like a Penn State white shirt. May have followed it into the end zone. First of all, was it a fumble? And, I don't know for sure, yeah. but I thought it was. And then who has it? It looks like they're marking, marking it on the one-yard line, marking it down. Marking it down. Three fullbacks stay on the field, give it back to 38. And there is a touchdown. John Whitman. Fullback number 22, who weighs 250, leading him into the end zone. Whitman weighs 239, so I mean that's a lot of a uh, lot of hump. <laughs> so get out of the way. Conway slaps the airman. Tight end stand up. That Sherman back to the ball, throws to the sidelines to the tight end, Slutster. He shakes a tackler. He keeps rumbling up the field. That's Derek Price, another tight end in motion. This time, Shaw gets the ball. And the youngster from first down. Move the change. Terry Killens, number 92, leads that defensive bunch. Brandon Noble is a fellow who's come along very well, and so has the youngster Brad Spioli with Atkins as linebacker U. And Jerry Filardi is the man in the middle who always seems to have a, a bunch of tackles. He uh, came in with 62 stops and 29 solos coming into this ball game. Here's an exciting fellow just checking into the lineup now for Iowa. His number is six. His name is Tim Dwight. He grew up here in Iowa City, wanted to go to South Carolina. Then he went to Stanford, had a look, came back and said, I'm staying home, and he can do everything. He is excited. Sherman gives the ball to Shaw, and Shaw is caught by number 44. Jim uh, left the lineup. Uh, Chris Snyder replaced him. Brian Miller is the leader of that defensive secondary, and it's a good one. Very good one. Uh, both the uh, other corner, Mark Tate, and the uh, free safety, Kim Herring, outstanding players. Call this guy back there, though, is six feet. And that gives the six foot five inch tight end a considerable edge. Here goes Dwight in motion on third down and four. Straight back goes Matt Sherman. Has a lot of time to pass it away. Dwight's got it. First down. 20 yard deal now. And they fake the pitch. Sherman throwing the ball to the end zone. Man is open. Touchdown. Demo Odoms. And here's Romano's kick. High hanger going into the wind. It is going to be pretty short. Fielded at the 15 by Pitts. Popped out of the crowd. Big return for Stephen Pitts before he is knocked out of bounds. He crosses midfield and goes down near the Iowa 41-yard line. Hey, Keith, everybody on the Hawkeyes were down there in one wave. And when he broke through this line right here, there was nobody else until he gets to the kicker and the safety. Well, Stephen Pitts is a young man that people have thought was going to team wants. Richardson with good protection. Gets it away to Ingram. He's got a first down as he goes to the 25-yard line. Average Ingram is working on night. You're going to see right in front of you. Number 10 comes back to the ball on a curl. Knight misses the tackle. That's a poor play by Knight. And when you get Ingram loose in the second in there, first off, uh, and then couldn't get it out. <laughs> can't keep him from doing something. Wally Richardson throws to Scott. He's out of bounds. That's incomplete. That's a good call. 42 yard try. Trying to untie the ball game. And he's got it up there with a the wind in his back. He's got plenty of leg on it, and it's good. 
And so Penn State goes back into the lead at 10 to 7 with 58 seconds to play in the first quarter. Line of scrimmage by Matt Sherman. And he lets it go. And it is caught by Slutsker, the tight end. And he's all the way out to midfield Three. in the first. This is Shaw. Trying to get outside. Lines won't let him have it. So on third and three, he loses three yards. It'll bring up four. And when you run a seven, you get your weight play. This is Mike Archie. And he's got a big play. All the way picture and Bobby Ingram's up at the top, and he hands the ball off to Pitts. And Pitts got enough daylight to get a first down, and he is still rolling along. That's number 54, the center of your screen. You gotta have confidence in that offensive line when it's third and five, and you run a little draw play. Rivera just eating him up. Look at the balance here. He's hit. Now he's gonna lose his balance. There's five, and there's 10. Well, they do a lot of dirty work. Ball is handed to Stephen Pitts, and he's got daylight, and then suddenly he's got Ingram now with that motion or together up at the top of the picture. Ball is handed to Archie. He's got the first down as he way. Figures he'll come to this side, and they do. Whitman just goes up and over the stack. Sticks it in the end zone, and Penn State has scored. Penn State leading by 10. That's 17 to 7. Big job. Over the top. From Georgia Tech. Cedric Shaw runs in all room. I mean, he hit that. Yeah, there's so much to that Sandusky. Sherman throws as he is hit. The pass is caught by Dwight for a first down. That's what makes this kid so exciting. Back number 85, and the pressure's coming, Sherman. Oh, Matthew. My goodness, it was Aaron Collins. He was in full speed as he belted the Iowa quarterback at the 35, Aaron. Back pedal right here. Like that. He's got his man. That's the big tight end, Slutsker, and he's got a first down. Down to the 40-yard line. Yes, of this. We noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> this is Shaw. Cedric Shaw. Tiptoeing down the first side. down 29 yard line. Sherman back throws to the sidelines. Dwight is there. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Uh, sneak up on it so it doesn't blow off again. <laughs> Taking it to 10. Oh, that's Ingram. No, it's Pitts. Stephen Pitts. That's a hit and a half. Number 37 in college football. Not the point of the battle. So that equalizes it a little bit. This is Pitts popping to the outside. Look out, he's a burner. Stephen Pitts with another big run of the ball game. This is uh, on the inside is Rivera, and uh, they're going to cross block. Johnson, watch the two of them as they cross block, and the fullback's going to pick up the linebacker. That's Diaco. Andre Johnson, Marco Rivera, and Jeff Hardings, three of them, top offensive linemen. That's why the yardage is just being ground out. Hits again. Here it goes again. And another first down. Oh, game, Penn State. Justin Williams checks in at a wide receiver position. This is Williams. Third down and 12. Richards missed his last seven. Didn't have a chance this time. Sherman wanted to throw it, didn't get a chance. Taken down by Nelson. Did he fumble the ball? Did he? Keep? Oh, I think was loose, but I think Iowa covered it. Play action on first down. This time, Nelson, number 44, is going to be blitzing. I think the ball gets knocked out of his hand by somebody coming around the edge there. There, yep. That's Nelson, Nelson. 44, and Shaw go to get on it. They're pretty good. Oh, they were. Third down and 16. German holds it a long time and then throws it, and it's batted aside by Todd Atkin. <laughs> Second down and 15. Archie runs it up the middle on a little draw action. Third down and nine from midfield. Hawkeye show blitz do not come. Drop off to cover the short zones, and Richardson has to look and look and look. 
and can't come up with anybody. Well, he had Keith Olsmer wide open his tight end. He tried to go to Scott and couldn't get a time score of Penn State 17 and Iowa 14. Picks and Chris Everly wait for it for the Lions and uh, the ball is fielded by Pitts up at the 11-yard line and he will get it back out to around the 27-yard line. The halftime stats. Take a look at the total yardage uh, for Penn State, 232. 230 for Iowa, almost the same, but Iowa gets theirs through the air, passing yards 207, whereas Penn State gets theirs on the ground 161. The one turnover, uh, Iowa had the turnover and the time of possession a little in favor. For Penn State, we said they had to eliminate turnovers. They've done that. Defensively, expect the unexpected. Well, they've given up. There's eight plays that have been over 18 yards, so there's been a lot of unexpected plays. Diopko with a hit on Archie. Richardson throws quickly, and the catch is made. And Richardson dumps it off to his fullback, Milton. Good move by Mill. Big play by Brian as he crosses the 45 fence. First of all, they had three number one draft choices drafted off the offense from uh, from last year's team. Now they've got all these great offensive linemen, and they've got two fullbacks, Whitman and this young man, Brian Mill. 250 pounds can Playing catch for the second half. Third down and nine. Richardson is finally taken down by number 94. Catch it. Saved himself a lot of yards before the day is over, and this one can be caught. It's right between them. He went right between them. It was Alphonse and Gaston. It's kicked into the end zone, and it's going to be a safety for Penn State. My goodness. You had the two of them back wait there minute, with the idea minute. to catch the wait ball. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This was an inadvertent touching by, yeah, it's just a touchback. It's Is that all? By Willie Guy. Then he steps away from it after signaling fair catch. And then number 21 backed into it, Eric Thigpen, and kicked it into the end zone. So even if it's a, if an Iowa player, it's still an inadvertent kick. For Iowa, 17-14 ball game. And here's Sherman with a man open. It's Cedric Shaw. Field. All the way down. Jaws in motion. Put him out there in the receiver position. Go underneath with it to Dwight. And Dwight's inside. Shaw hit in the backfield. Buried in the backfield. He's going to run it. Down to the five. So the Hawkeyes have tied the score at 8.29 to play in the third quarter. They didn't hit the ground yet. <laughs> Richardson setting up a wide receiver screen down the middle of the field for Bobby Ingram. This is trouble. They finally track him down and get him at the Iowa 25-yard line. Chris Jackson ran him down. Manny Gantner, his quarterback, is having some trouble. Only completed four passes. So he has him come back to throw a safe simple pass to the wide receiver now you've got your best player in broken field this kid's going to be a first round draft choice one of the top wide receivers in the country and you've got him uh, with two or three people between him and the goal line so it's first down on the big play for the Nittany Lions threatening again a 17-17 ball game in the third quarter and Wally Richardson back to throw it going to the end zone with it it's incomplete intended for Joe they show blitz, they don't come, and Pitts gets the ball right up the pipe. To the goal line. The middle. That's Conlon, 53. Tilch is the center, 75. And uh, last week, the third string running back for Open Indiana. backfield is on the field. And it's Whitman, touchdown. So Penn State goes back to the lead 
as Whitman goes over the top for his third touchdown of the day. Where now goes Penn State 24, Iowa 17, and Conway's made 66 straight points after. From Iowa possession. Just outside the 34-yard line, Matt Sherman straight back. Defense coming down, he goes. Yeah, can't let those big fellows uh, dig in and stand 21, a loss of 11 yards. Passes away, the pass to Slutsker, the tight end. Nelson's over there, got a piece of him. And he is taking Pressure coming, passes away, got him open. That's the tight end, Slutsker. And down the Kenny, most of the time. From the 22, it is Cedric Shaw. Second down from the six, second and goal. Sherman back in trouble. Tremendous rush by Killens, number 92. The tackle goes out too far and gives Killens a path to the inside. Now that's McKinney who is playing in place of Sherman. Third down and goal from back at the 10. They fly one up the middle and there's nothing. Scholarship 105 and he couldn't come because he won 105. Kick is good. <laughs> Great score. So a big personality in the rest of this ball game. Want to run a little reverse with Freddie Scott. All they got to do is tackle him, and they do all the way back at the 26 yard and 19. This could be a big play in the whole structure of the story of this game. It's batted in the air. It is intercepted. Picked off by George Bennett, a defensive end. And Iowa has the ball at the Penn State 30. Big, big, big chance here for Iowa. A little fake. Give it off to Cedric Shaw. Shaw's got it. Through a hole. Still going. Touchdown. 19 yards. He was supposed to have a groin injury coming yeah. up too, huh? <laughs> That's right. This is Stephen Pitts, who's a burner. You better get him. Or he's gone. He's getting a lot of help, though. His uh, guys up front blocking for him, doing a good job, and now he's going to break a couple tackles. Right there, he could have come down. Does a nice little twisting job. Pitts has been around for a while. This is his fifth First year. down, Nittany Lions. Iowa leading by three, 27-24. This is John. Sorry, Hayden, I found that one up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know how to talk about that. Oh, no, I can't tell. Here goes Pitts outside. He's got a first down. First down for the Lions. Here they come. That's Pitts. Oh, he's something. Oh. Archie going in motion becomes a wide receiver. Oh, he won't do anything. Number 94 just. So here's Conway with a kick from the 16-yard line. That is good. A 26-yard field goal ties the score one more time at 27. Better hurry, Matt. Six sacks. Here they come. Matt Sherman lost it. So I don't think Nick Gallery will be. Oh, it's good. Oh, my gosh. How did he get it away? There was a white shirt right in his face, but he got it out to the 40-yard line where Ingram is lined up right over center. How does he get this off? Near miracle. But yard line, first down. Archie and Whitman in the backfield. And way, hasn't it? Yep. This is Whitman again. Richardson's pass is caught all right. Pitts is in. Richardson throwing deep into the corner. Touchdown, Bobby Ingram. You're just going to throw the ball to the corner of the end zone and hope that Ingram can outrun him. But just don't have to outrun him, just get some separation. Atkins probably thought he had. So Penn State 
is out to a 34-27 lead over Iowa with 6.07 to play in the game. All right, it's Sherman, quarterback, Shaw behind him, Myler behind him. Shaw out on a pass pattern to the sidelines, makes the catch up at the 38. This is Shaw on the ground. Got a hole on the left side, and Kim Herring trips it. Sherman has time because there uh, might is double covered. That may be intercepted. I yes. think it is by Kim Herring. He tried to force it, and he couldn't get it home. Keith, he had time. He looks to the right. Everybody's coming in, looks back left. Now he's got great time, but the problem is all the defensive men are closing in. You see Herring number three was looking at his eyes the whole way. Well, now Penn State with five minutes and 32 seconds to play in a ball game. Here comes Mike Archie with some fresh legs, getting outside and getting a big play. He's in motion. He becomes a wideout. That gives him three. They're going to throw. Down the middle. They let it go big for Bobby Ingram. He's got it. Touchdown! Just throw it to Ingram. He got away from Billy Coates. That's what they did the last time on. He's going to look to his left initially, but but you can bet that he was throwing it to Ingram down this side on the. Ingram does a nice job of, of playing off of Coates number 30. And remember, with 3:09 to play in the ball game. State has a two-touchdown lead. A rear record day. And do here. Makes it pressure coming. Killens got him back at the 10. Nobody touched Killens. He came free. That's eight sacks. Eight times they've gotten him. And go back goes Sherman. Cedric Shaw gets away. Steps out of bounds. On fourth down. Sherman gets his pass away. Slutkin's got it for a first down. And more. All the way up. Well, he's had a career day, too. Shaw's got it. High stepper. Bus Hendricks uh, surprised some, but he also surprised the fry. So. The pass for Odoms is intercepted by Clint Holmes. He went up over the top. The gamer. Well, Sherman hasn't thrown a touch, uh, an interception in, in four games. He went 77 straight, but he's been ahead in all those games. When you get behind and you get pressure near the end of the game, these are the types of chances. The clock. 203 left to play, and they give it to the big guy, fresh legs, you know, and all of that. Youthful enthusiasm, speed, muscles, talent. He's in right now at the backfield. 39, Curtis Enos has the ball. And you've got nine seconds. We're counting it down. The ball game is over. It is a final score of Penn State 41, Iowa 27. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Stephen Pitts from Penn State, Matt Sherman from Iowa, celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. Here are the Big Ten standings now at the close of this day, and it's Northwestern Ohio State sitting right up on the top.